Uh, so yeah, I'm uh, I'm Rick Reynolds. Uh, I am one of the co-hosts of the Intellivisionaries podcast. Uh, we cover all things in television. Um, primarily, uh, we want to cover the games. We do what we call a, a deep dive on the games. Uh, we try to get to know, you know, the nuances in a game. Um, things like, you know, when you would get a new game for Christmas, um, you would uh, play that game forever and ever, even if it was that great, right? <laughs> play it and play it. And you'd learn all these different nuances in the game. So, um, yeah, that's kind of what we what we try to do with the games on the show. Uh, we we try to do the, the deep dive. Uh, also, we do uh, a lot of interviews with programmers and other people that had uh, the hand in, in making the system, uh, marketing the system, and that kind of stuff. So, uh, so yeah, you can find our show over uh, on iTunes uh, or at Intellivisionaries.com. Check out our, our website, Intellivisionaries.com. And uh, to, one of the things that we do um, on the show is uh, a segment we like to call Homebrew Highlight. Uh, where we, uh, we, we just kind of discuss a, a homebrew release instead of one of the original 125. And um, I mean, we do cover the 125s in, in full reviews, but um, sometimes we'll do just, just do the homebrew highlight. So I wanted to do kind of a video version of that for the con here, for the expo. Uh, and uh, that's what we're going to get to in just a second. Yeah, I want to draw your attention to uh, Extra Life Day. I'm sure folks know about Extra Life Day. It's a, um, a charity to, uh, to benefit um, children's hospitals. I'm going to be doing my stream on December uh, 5th and on, and on December 6th. I'm breaking it up into two days. I just can't do 24 hours straight anymore. Uh, I got really physically ill last year. <laughs> so I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to break it up into two halves of sorts. Um, so uh, yeah, that's in two weeks. Uh, so if you want to check that out, I have uh, information on my website, rickandviv.net. Um, I certainly would appreciate it. And anybody who can do so uh, tributing, uh, uh, contributing to the, to the campaign um, so that, um, uh, you know, we raise money for a charity. Uh, it's a good charity. So uh, yeah, there's that. So let me uh, let me jump into. I have a video to show of uh, so, like so. We're going to do a um, homebrew highlight session, and um, the uh, uh, I, I just have some video that I took of some gameplay of various uh, games uh, that are either just came out recently or are on the way uh, to coming out very soon. Uh, you uh, have actually seen some screenshots of them in previous uh, presentations I saw and some interstitial things, but I wanted to uh, you get a little bit more here in terms of um, in terms of a little gameplay time, that kind of thing. So I'm going to change my uh, change my screen share over to the video I want to share. All right, so I'm hoping that uh, you can still hear me talking over the sound of the... Uh, of the video itself. But yeah, this is a, a new game. It's going it's called Antarctic Tales. That's coming out uh, winter of 2020. I think you can tell. Um, oh, good. I'm getting a information. It's good balance. It's good. Uh, you can tell this is a uh, very much like uh, Antarctic adventure for ColecoVision. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, we're getting a port of that game, more or less, uh, to the system. This is a game by uh, Carlos Madruga. Uh, this game, as I understand it, is more or less complete at this point, uh, ready for release in uh, winter of 2020. You can tell I'm not very good at this kind of game. <laughs> um, there, I got a bonus. And uh, I didn't realize it. I think I should have been looking for the walrus, because <laughs> I nailed the walrus uh, at high speed there, unfortunately. But anyway. Um, but yeah, it, it, uh, it looks very much like the ColecoVision version it plays. Uh, I had no trouble controlling the penguin. Music sounds very familiar. Uh, if you've uh, played the uh, ColecoVision game, and I think the, uh, the 3d effect of the snow coming at you, um, looks good. You know, you can see some clouds moving and stuff in the background there. Nervix calling out the less less flicker on the television, right? <laughs> I'm being told in the chat that some extras have been added. I'm not a pro at um, an Antarctic adventure, um, but you see the map screen here. It's got the different bases that you move through as you're working around in Antarctica. So uh, I, th I think the game looks really good. Um, and like I said, I had, I had no trouble controlling the controlling the penguin and uh, playing the game, even though. Um, my skill at it isn't so great. <laughs> uh, you, you may you may question whether uh, whether I was doing well at it, but 
So yeah, like I say, winter 2020, uh, that one's expected to be released. As you watch me flail around trying to avoid walruses. All right, so the next one, um, next one coming up is Castle of Death. Uh, this is a game by uh, by Oscar, who uh, just did a chat about uh, development on the uh, in television earlier in the in the uh, expo here. Did you see that flash with the skull? <laughs> Pretty cool. <laughs> but basically, the uh, the idea here is that it's um, you've got uh, uh, you've got to get through this castle of these deadly rooms, more or less, right? And I'll be honest, I am not very good at this game. It is tough. Um, but I'm in the tutorial castle here and uh, just kind of moving through it and you're learning how to do the various things. Like the uh, one thing I like, the double jump is actually the top button on the controller. So you don't have to worry about double jumping, which, which I appreciate. <laughs> and yeah, there you go. That's what it looks like when you die. Uh, you'll see that a lot as you play this game because it's quite difficult. And I think you'll see me die quite a bit in this video. So you see, I'm getting across there. Get the get the key. But you know, <laughs> I do like the animation of the blood when you uh, when you die on these spikes and stuff. Now you may have caught a glitch in the audio there, assuming it's streaming well. I cut out probably another 15 deaths just because I wanted to show you more of this game. Rather than you see me dying a hundred times on this one screen over and over again. Uh, so, yeah, there was a cut there just so I could get to the place where I actually passed this thing. <laughs> Move on to the next one. This one I did a little bit better on. Um, but again, these are pretty, I don't want to say pixel perfect jumps, but they're pretty precise jumps that you have to do. So if you're that kind of player that likes the challenge of really precise platformy jumps, that kind of thing, this is a great game for you because each of these little screens has a new challenge for you to uh, to chew on and try to get through. I never did get through this game, this this uh this screen rather. You'll see me. I just trying to get <laughs> trying to get back up there. Um, I had a lot of time. Had a lot of, a lot of trouble. I never figured out how to jump from the top. Where the key is and land down below. Every time I would jump, I'd hit my head and, and dive right into the spikes. Um, so this is kind of where my game ended, quite frankly. But you can uh, you can definitely see what's going on here with this game. And there's a lot of levels to go through. This one is still in uh, under development. It's scheduled for release around 2021. Sometime in 2021. Here's Frankenstein's monster. Uh, you can see there's a, this is the cart release that is going to come out uh, probably winter 2020. Still under development. And of course, this is also by Oscar. Uh, you see there's a bunch more options now. You turn the music on and off. It has two types of music, which I thought was cool. What do you call scary music and regular music? Um, of course, this is the uh, a port of the 2600 game. And um, I mean, I think this game is like a go-to Halloween time for people who have 2600 like it uh, this one however it looks better I think in the, than the 2600 because um, you can right the television's got a, got a slightly better graphics chip and layout and it's all that kind of stuff particularly for background graphics that really spice this up a little bit the monster looks better <laughs> um, someone said can you fall down he just fall down. If you, if I were to fall through that hole in the second, in that, in, a, in that uh, yellow layer there, I'd fall in the water and that would kill me. But I do make use of the um, the hole later on the next screen, so you can kind of shortcut that. But like you know, I mean, this is a this is a great um, this is a great game. Like it's it's super fun on the on the twenty six hundred. You know, folks who play uh, 2600 a lot will we'll put this in their top 10 usually as, a, as just a really fun game. Uh, perfect to bring out in Halloween time, of course. Uh, this will definitely be a every year kind of thing for uh, for me going forward at Halloween time, I'm sure. And uh, I definitely think it's worthy of getting a cart release.
Oh, he's asking if I could have fallen straight down on the um, in, in uh, the Castle of Death. I think I just walked off and I also hit the spikes. <laughs> so there's something I got to do there that isn't, you know, got to find the exact position to jump at or something. Yeah. So anyway. So anyway, I wanted to show a good bit of this game in the stream here just because I think it looks so good and is a, a really good version of the 2600 game. And I also just wanted to give you enough of it so you could see when the monster gets loose, because it's kind of cool. Um, but I think, yeah, I, like I say, this is just dynamite. Uh, I enjoyed this game a ton, playing it for the uh, for the for the recording here. And it, um, you know, better graphics I think than the 2600 because of what it can do. But this, the gameplay is all here, uh, the same kind of gameplay um, as the 2600 version. So. If this is a favorite of yours in the 2600, I, I highly recommend this one. Like I say, there's more options than the uh, freebie. Oh, I, I guess I didn't say. He uh, he actually put this out, uh, a version of this, he put this out around Halloween this year to um, uh, you know, for free, just to everybody. So there was a ROM version of it, and you know, again, what we're looking at here is a more feature-rich version that's going to come on the cartridge. I think I'm not going to last much longer here, so if you're wanting to see more games, uh, that, that'll that be shortly. <laughs> like I say, I, I didn't feel like I was wasting my time by, by giving this one some a little bit longer screen time than some of the others. Because you, you either run out of time as the Frankenstein's monster gets green. There we go, I died. Or you lose your lives. So yeah, here comes the monster. Just like in the 2600, kind of. And then, I just love this. This is so cool. <laughs> uh, great uh, uh, great ending to the game there. So, yeah. So, Winter 2020 uh, is the slated item on that one. Uh, Heli, or Healy. I'm going to guess had it. I'm going to guess Heli. This is going to uh, look very familiar. Uh, another one by Carlos Madruga. Um, this is very much um, a port of Hero. Of course, uh, Hero uh, being a classic on the 2600, 5200, um, ColecoVision got a version, and then it came out for you know various 8-bit computers. It even came out on the SG-1000, uh, but for some reason, you know, never got one on the Intellivision. Till now. So this game is, uh, again, more or less complete. Um... Uh, slated for a winter 2020 release. I, I didn't mention it at the top. I should have. Uh, these first handful of games that I'm showing are all uh, going to be released under the Intelli uh, Intellivision Revolution publishing banner. Uh, so that's that's this one too. So yeah, good music. I agree, Michael. Um, and if you've played Hero, you know that it has this kind of a... Um, uh, set pattern of levels you have to memorize... Um, your way through it, and it has like cheap deaths. <laughs> There's a couple places in here where I uh, when you, you go down a you go down a into the cavern below you, and you don't know what's below you until you've actually seen that cavern, and and, and if you can remember it. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, I was. I, I thought I remembered going this way. I was wrong. I should have gone the other way. <laughs> um, but uh, it does get rid of the enemy after you've uh, been killed by an enemy, so you can keep going. Um, but yeah, um, as far as I can remember, I'm not a big hero player uh, myself. But as far as I can remember, this seems like the versions of, I've played, you know, back in the day when we used to play hero. Uh, my friend's house, he had an Atari. And by the way, that's also kind of a, uh, a theme for a lot of these ports. We're getting ports of... Um, of games that never came out for our system that came out for other systems. There's a whole lot of those in this batch, which is cool. Uh, you know, there were definitely, um, I know, I don't, I, I think all of us in television owners had a little bit of uh, game envy uh, when it came to other systems getting certain games and wondering, is it going to come out on my system? And one of the things that the homebrew community has been able to do is um, kind of rectify that, right? Bring out some of these games that uh, that never came out on, on the Intellivision. I think I'm almost done with this one, so... Uh...
Oh yeah, so I, 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 yeah, I, I wanted to show you a little bit of this um, these lava, these lava walls and such. I, I didn't uh, um. I wasn't sure if the walls, if if the lava walls couldn't be destroyed, but then you had to on this level. Uh, I was, I something made me think that the walls couldn't be destroyed, but they can be, or at least some of them can be. So, yeah, you see there, a cheap death kind of a thing, very much the way uh, Hero goes. So, um, yeah. So this next one, uh, Intellivania, right? That one seems louder to me. I'm going to turn it down just a bit. So, um, in Televania, well, I wish that player would get off the screen. There we go. Good. Um, obviously, uh, Castlevania port uh, to the Intellivision. And you're obviously dealing with the limitations of the Intellivision graphics, right? It's not going to look like the... Um, the NES classic that you know, everyone knows and, and plays, and I, I, to be, I gotta confess, I'm not a big Castlevania player myself. Uh, I've certainly played it some, um, but like, yeah, clearly this has the feel of Castlevania. Uh, I really enjoyed playing this. This game is uh, by uh, uh, Skywaffle, is the username, <laughs> and uh, I'm told that it is complete and uh, should be uh, ready for release uh, also Winter 2020. And I gotta say, this was um, really fun to play. It, um, I had to get used to the timing of the whip and stuff like that, but the levels are very much like uh, Castlevania that I've that I've played. Uh, what little I've played of Castlevania, I remember these levels, uh, this first level, and into the into the next level thing that I that I got through. And um, yeah, like I say, it 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 has a feel. It feels like you're playing Castlevania. And I think, and the reason, and, and I think it's reasonably on par with Castlevania in terms of hardness, because, like, I, I never get very far in Castlevania, and I didn't get very far in Intellivania, so that seems like that's close to on par with what's going on there. You can see I was trying to get the jump whip action figured out properly. Now, I appreciated this right here. They hid the food in the wall, just like on the NES version. <laughs> so, uh, so I, I, I don't know enough about Castlevania to tell you if every single little hidden thing is here, but I did know to look for that one, and there it was. So that's cool. So yeah, I think this is one of those titles that again um, shows uh, something we've talked about on the podcast before. That a lot of times when you're when a when a platform comes out, you, know, you get pretty simple looking games for you know the complexity of what that platform can do and then late in the game's uh, age you start seeing people take advantage of what the um what the platform can actually do and so here we have a game that you know it's an nes game uh on the intellivision now no one's going to mistake it and think this is the nes because the graphics and the the resolution and the way the character looks and that kind of thing but um you're playing castlevania basically <laughs> So, super, uh, super excited to get to see this come out on the system. I think this is really good. I think I don't play, I don't think I have much more of this to show. I think I get to the boss pretty soon, and uh, I don't know what I'm doing at the boss, <laughs> and I die. Um, but yeah, I know this is a title that a lot of people have been... Uh, have been looking forward to, so I wanted to put some uh, put some gameplay this in there too in, in my presentation today. Yeah, here we go. This is, we're clearly we're getting to the end here. So here comes the boss. Uh, I don't last very long. <laughs> There we go. So, <laughs> so I didn't, uh, I didn't, I didn't play much more than that. Just uh, thought I'd given you a, a good first look. 
this is a port of Tempest that's being worked on uh, by Chris Reed. You saw on the intro screen there. This is still under development, and it and it looks like it's still under development. It's it's um, you could see that the uh, the blaster is uh, kind of jumping around uh, uh, in discrete discrete locations, discrete locations at the top of the of the well there. Um, but clearly, you know, someone's thinking about Tempest and thinking about uh, what that might look like on the Intellivision. I, I, I assume that these enemies are kind of placeholders at this point, that kind of stuff. I, um, but it's kind of interesting. It's kind of cool. Um, I didn't put a whole bunch of gameplay in here because it's, it's clear this one isn't particularly, uh, particularly well developed yet. It's still pretty early on that one, I think. Well, here's Unlucky Pony. Unlucky Pony's Adventures. This one has been the source of a lot of go a lot of uh, goofy joking, I think, on the Atari Age. Um, another Oscar game, uh, Nano Chess. Uh, this one is uh, slated for uh, a release sometime in 2021. Clearly, a uh, Super Mario Brothers slash Giannis Great Gianna Sisters uh, kind of game. Um, so yeah, if uh, you know. It's <laughs> it looks like you know, uh, N NES had the uh, uh, Super Mario Brothers, C64 got the Great Gianna Sisters, and uh, we're gonna get uh, Unlucky Pony. <laughs> I played this a little bit, um, uh, through a my I think I read in the uh, little text file that I was sent with it that it has uh, like like 10, 10, uh, 10 levels. Uh, ten worlds, I guess I mean to say, right? I got killed by whatever that black guy was. A little nasty looking thing. Anyway. Um, and the, uh, the pony's picking up all the all the little oranges, apples, whatever. I think they're oranges. Um, obviously, you know, unlike... Uh, Unlike uh, the NES, you know, you're not going to get tons and tons of enemies on the screen at the same time, but it's going to have the same feel, and it definitely has that um, that platformer feel. Um, and I and I noticed the the pony has his own kind of jump mechanics, his or her own jump mechanics. It is not um, it, it's its own it's its own thing, I guess. What I'm trying to say, right? It's it's not just trying to jump exactly the way Mario does, for instance. So we got to the castle. That's cool. Pony is very happy, as you can see. <laughs> um, I did just a bit of uh, World One Two here, just to show that it is uh, very reminiscent of World One Two in, uh, in in Super Mario Brothers. Um, I did an edit here at some point to jump through uh, this level towards the end because there's a there's a boss at the end that I thought would be cool to show. Yeah, so there's the edit cut. And uh, yeah, your name is something trash. I, I read it in the manual, a uh, little text thing, and I and I, I honestly just should have written it down on my little note card here. But um, the goal here is to jump on this witch's hat a number of times, but not any other part of the witch. So uh, I, it took me a little bit to kind of get my head around that and to do it correctly. But I did manage to eventually beat this witch um, by jumping on the hat. However many times I had to, uh, but I do I do get killed a couple times first. <laughs> so I'm kind of coming down um, uh, and, and hitting the witch, not the hat. I was trying to get like a double hit, and I finally gave up on that idea and just kind of bounced away, like I'm doing now, uh, as a way of um, a way of trying to attack the witch. I don't know, maybe I am hitting the hat hitting the hat twice there. It doesn't make a I don't notice that it makes a big um, notification. I think I'm I think it makes a sound. Yeah, that barrel sound, I think that's that's when you score to hit. Here I was trying to see if I could double jump and some things like that, but there we go. Got the witch. Pony is happy again. Alright, we'll move on from that one very shortly here. Um I, I, just just a glimpse at the next level, you know different color palette. Uh, this one actually starts looking a lot more uh, like a sky level. You start losing the, the, the bottom there. So, yeah. So this is definitely um, complete. Uh, coming out in um, 2021. 
2021. Snow level. Yeah, yeah, you could call this a snow level, I guess. <laughs> So people are asking for the length of the video, just so the, just for the, we got a little, little under 19 minutes left, guys. So I know we're kind of running late on things on Twitter. Um, yeah, so the next game, uh, the next set of games that I have to show is, uh, they're going to be uh, produced uh, by Electronite, as I understand it. Um, now, Cosmic Avengers actually already come out. I wanted to show this one, and just because I'm, I'm not sure how, how much, press this one got i don't know right um cosmic avenger is an arcade port uh and it's done by a guy who likes to go by uh dr ports <laughs> uh and uh you will see i have a bunch of dr ports games uh here in this video here towards the tail end here to uh to go for um he does ports he does ports of other games but of arcade games primarily so uh obviously um this is a uh kind of a scramble clone lots of color on the screen lots of uh lots of stuff happening um, uh, but again, this was an arcade game, so there were scramble clones coming out in the arcade, right? Um, Super Cobra being uh, a classic that most television owners are familiar with. We got a Super Cobra port uh, television. Uh, I, I kind of I tend to like this one better than Super Cobra myself. Um, but yeah, for, so for people who uh, you know want kind of a scramble kind of a uh, kind of a game. I think this is closer to Scramble than, than Super Cobra is. At least, at least that's how I feel about it. So yeah, I didn't get very far. Um, I can't remember if I started another one. Oh yeah, I just, yeah, just want to show you that's, that's Cosmic Avenger. Um, this is another one by Dr. Ports. It's an arcade game that I had never heard of called Fantasy. You can hear it's gotten televoice support. Um, scheduled for release again, winter 2020 kind of coming out. Um, the, this game is super interesting. Like, like again, for, for a really, um, obscure arcade game, uh, to port it, uh, it, it has multi screens. It's got lo various things that you're doing in the game. Like at first one you saw was just a challenge to, to, to land the balloon on the, on the boat, uh, which didn't turn out to be too big of a challenge. I was able to do it quickly. <laughs> But here you're trying to rescue your girl Sherry here, um, and you got these natives, the bad guys, whatever you want to call them. I had a little bit of a hard time getting myself lined up with them uh, on how to how to how to how to kill them. You're you're walking around waving this little stick <laughs> to, as your weapon, um, and eventually, uh, eventually, I did get past these guys uh, and was able to rescue her. But you have this room that you're in, and there's this cannon, just like on the boat. I mean, uh, in the first screen, this cannon shoots at you, so you got to kind of time your walk to avoid uh, cannonballs coming out of the cannon. Um, I think here I do a little bit better and get these guys. Yeah, so avoid the cannonballs, and then the cannon is going to rotate another 90 degrees. Yep, there you go, and uh, you avoid that and come and get the girl, and rescue her. She's kidnapped again, very much like a lot of these older arcade games. So then you're in a, another stage. It's another different gameplay stage where you're um, you can't hit these uh, you can't hit the coconut trees. You'll 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 crash. Uh, so you have to avoid the coconut trees and avoid the obstacles that are flying by you there. And you have to travel 300 kilometers. <laughs> I love the goofy sound of the ape makes when he gets hit in the head. Um, but uh, you have to travel a certain distance. You see, I made 780 on that run. It keeps accumulating that up. So you don't have to have a perfect run of 3,000 kilometers. You just have to get through this stage. Uh, and I gave myself, I think, nine lives at the beginning because I still find this game to be pretty hard. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I mean, I, I think the music's great. It's very colorful. A lot of, a lot of, uh, it's using the voice module for various things, which is very cool. Um, and, and, and varied gameplay, the different screens, you're doing different things in each one. Um, and, and that's always, that's fun. It reminds me of like mini games or something like that. You know, like like uh, Tron, the arcade game had those mini games that weren't overly connected, but uh, 
In this one, you're always rescuing the girl that's kind of kind of connected, I guess. That, that ape <laughs> it cracks me up. Um, so you can hear the girl shouting, you know, that's the IntelliVoice. I also played this with my uh, ECS connected because I noticed that the um, the game image, the ROM, detect, it detected the ECS. So I assume maybe it's using more musical voices, stuff like that. Or, or maybe it's just, uh, or maybe it's doing stuff with the extra RAM. I'm not sure. But um, I thought I'd give it its best look for the for the expo today. I'm going to get through this stage, uh, and then I'll, you'll be able to see the, the the last stage that I got to, and um, we'll move on to the next game after that. But, yeah, so there we go. I got, I got the 3,000 kilometers. And we're still trying to rescue Sherry. Poor Sherry. Always getting kidnapped. So here you have this level. It's very much like, um, uh, reminded me very much of uh, Kangaroo. Um, now I was dumb. I came up that line. I, 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 I got uh, I got hit by that uh, by that squirrel. I, I think it's avoidance on this one. I don't think you can jump him or punch him or anything. Um, so I'm going to let the squirrel go by this time, and then I'll go up the go up the side there and then I was actually trying to figure out if I could do anything with those green vine looking things can I climb them can I do anything and I got myself mixed up and got hit by the apple so and that was the end of it <laughs> and then it had this weird static at the end that I need I need to report uh, back to uh, the publisher about that but anyway uh, winter 2020 on that one uh, here's Clax another Dr. Ports and I gotta confess I've uh, never played Clax <laughs> before um uh, this gameplay you're looking at right here. It's just a game that I'd never come across. So I wasn't sure what I was looking at yet. Um, but I eventually, you know, just I could catch these uh, these pieces that are coming down that um, there's like a conveyor belt at the top there that's bringing pieces to you. And then you can drop them and you try to make three in a row. Um, so very much um, reminiscent of, um, uh, you know, it, 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 it's a build up Tetris style puzzle game but more like columns, if you've played columns where you have the, trying to get three colors in a row, uh, except that you're putting each brick, you know, brick in place. Um, so I'm, I'm learning to play this as I go in this video. Um, this one, uh, I'd, I'd have, I didn't get any real information on this one about uh, when this one might be ready for release. It's, this one's still under development. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, Clax, a game by Atari, puzzle game. Um, came out for 2600. I think it was the last Atari published game for the 2600, if I remember reading that correctly. Um, and you, you can hear the voice. I still have my Intel voice hooked up on this one. So it's got some voice stuff in it too. Um, uh, so uh, yeah, it came out with 2600, 5200, 7800, and then 8 bit computers like the ST, the C64, and lots and lots of others. I didn't bother writing them all down. Um, but uh, but yeah, um, I, I I hear a lot about Clax. I hear people talking about how much they enjoy Clax, and I had never actually played it. And I can totally see this being a pretty fun, a go to kind of puzzle game. Um, and I think you've, you may have heard me on the on the podcast mention that I I, I like puzzle games in general, and I, I like to see more of them on the platform. So this is really cool uh, to see this one coming out. I uh, I I. Uh, Play this just a little while to give you know again because I think it's a uh, an anticipated title. Um, Tim's letting me know. Yes, I was correct. It was the last kind of official release by Atari for the twenty six hundred. I thought that was right. So yeah, uh, again, Doctor Ports is uh, is the is the uh, author of the games I've shown so far, and again, these are going to be um, uh, by, you know, by William and Electronite. Um, now this one said diagonal waves to me, and, uh, and so I, I took that to heart and presumed I had to make diagonals. Uh, so uh, I, I hadn't really thought about that too much yet. <laughs> so you can see me make a couple of mistakes here, um, and I and I haven't you know. I didn't get a manual with this. It's a ROM. It's a ROM in progress right now. So I, I wasn't sure what those three, um, you know, the, the, the red, the red and the black that are right above the word drop meter there in the screen there. I wasn't quite sure what, uh, what they're trying to indicate to me versus the ones on the end that don't have those and why one, why two are red and one's black. I, you know, I, I don't really know about that one. So, um, but 
you know, all of that will be explained in a manual, of course. Uh, you can see here I'm starting to actually make things look a little more like diagonals. <laughs> I finally do get a diagonal here on the uh, on the on the blue. And yeah, so that was my uh, that was my uh, my round of clacks. So again, no no rumor about um, when that one's coming out yet. Um, so this is Omega Race, another Doctor Ports. Um, and oh man, Omega Race is such a favorite of mine. Um, this one's more or less complete. Also slated for a winter 2020 release. Um, you can see I, I I think I needed to get better at using the. Um, uh, use the controller and, and, and the controls of it. Omega Race, of course, is uh, made for a paddle uh, for, for directing your ship and buttons to shoot and fire and, and, and uh, shoot and fire, thrust and fire and that kind of thing. Um, so I was still kind of getting used to the controls as I was making this video, so I don't, I don't play all that well on it, but um, it has this mode, which is the black and white mode, which is the arcade mode, right? It has, uh, it's, uh, it, it's trying to look like the uh, vector graphics of the original. Um, so for this next one, I, I switched over to uh, the enhanced color mode, which I uh, uh, wanted to play a little longer on, and um, really, uh, really thought this was fun. I, I really like the color adding. I, I didn't think I would. I honestly thought it would feel a little stupid, like, you know, come on, it's, it's a black and white game. It ought to look black and white, be a purist, you know, but uh, I ended up really liking this. Um, so yeah, so... Uh, this uh, is an arcade game, of course. It came out on the uh, head ports of the 2600, the VIC-20, C64, the ColecoVision. Um, it's a personal favorite of mine. I, I don't actually remember playing it a ton in the arcade, but I think it was one of the few, one of the first um, uh, arcade-style quality games that I got for the C64 when I had the C64 and played the crap out of this game. Just loved it. Um, so I'm super excited to see this come to the Intellivision too. And I, and again, like I said, I think I like the, uh, I think I like the color. <laughs> I think I like the color more than I like the black and white. It just, uh, seeing that, you know, the bad shit that comes at you, seeing colored red is kind of fun. <laughs> so, yeah. See, I don't remember how much more I how much more I leave in here of this one, but um, I, 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 had a good, I had a good time playing it. Uh, I, I think I need to get more more time on it. It does have a, a two versions of the of the control. Um, you can do the left right style versus just point your disc where you want to point. Um, that might be worth investigating because, um, like I say, I was struggling a little bit with control. Uh, next up to show is a is a, a copy uh, a, a working version of um, Rick Dynamite. Which is, uh, I, I left this on, by the way. You, I think you could skip this intro screen, but I thought it was kind of cool, the, the um, adventure movie, adventure serial movie kind of introduction on this thing. It's really well done. Um, but yeah, this uh, Rick Dynamite is a, um, a Rick Dangerous clone that uh, has been rumored and looked at and demoed and whatever, I think maybe 10 years. I, I, I don't know. People might want to correct me on the actual dates and some of this stuff. Um, finally getting a release, finally getting it put together. I'm not very good at this game at all. Oh, someone's putting in there 14 years. This thing's been, <laughs> people have been working on this in some way. Uh, so finally getting a release, which is super exciting. Um, this will, I have this in with the Electronite games, um, but uh, that's because I got it from William, but I think this will be published by Intellivision Revolution uh, when it comes out. Um, it, uh, uh, Rick Dangerous, of course, was a game that was on the Amiga, C64, uh, the ST. More known for, um, uh, you know, 8, -bit, 8 and 16-bit computers. Uh, DOS had a version. Uh, DOS had a version of most of these games. Um, but, uh, I mean, you know, very Indiana Jones-esque. You can see here I have to crawl to, to get under that ledge there, which is kind of really cool to have that kind of thing in there. Um, I've never played uh, Rick Dangerous, so uh, all I've ever played is this Dy Rick Dynamite uh, version of it. Um, but I wanted to get you to see a few of the screens that are in here. I, I again, since I've never played the other one, I'm, I'm not entirely sure how authentic they are, how close to the are to the Amiga version or whatever they are. But it's certainly a fun game. Um, I enjoyed getting around it, even though I'm not very good at this style of game, quite frankly. Uh, but still, I'm being told it's very close to the Amiga level, so that's cool. 
Um, but yeah, this is one of those that's been, um, I was trying to make sure I didn't get hit by that, <laughs> by that spear from the, from the mask there. Um, you can see there a cheap death kind of thing, right? It's one of those one of those games where you have to kind of memorize the level as you go. I, I didn't know those spikes were there until I landed on them. Um, but yeah, if you, uh, you know, very reminiscent. In, in, okay, I know this predates Sydney Hunter, but like the Sydney Hunter is what scratches the itch for me so far in television, right? Where you're in these these ruins and doing this and that and the other. So, um, so it's another game of that ilk. If you like that kind of uh, gameplay, here's uh, this is going to be really good. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty uh, pretty happy to see this one come out. Uh, I think I saw like a s intro screen or demo or something like this. You know, like I said, years and years ago. So now you see I got killed by the spikes on the other side that I didn't know were there. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, it's one of those games where you'll play through it and play through it and play through it and learn the levels. Um, so yeah, that's Rick Dynamite coming out soon. I think it's very soon, a few weeks away. Uh, and then the last one, last one I want to show you was another Doctor Ports. This one's actually been released. It's Wizard of War. You can hear the Intella voice um, uh, it, that's been that I have hooked up to, to do the voices on this game. Uh, I'm a big fan of Wizard of War. Um, it's not that uh, not that big of a secret that uh, I was actually working on a port of this, an assembler at one point. Um, I just you know couldn't couldn't get the critical mass together to get the game going. But um, I had a, I had some stuff drawn on the screen. But I mean that, that, that's how much I enjoy this game. So uh super excited to see this one finished and 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 being and uh purchased like so this one already came out um i think i saw someone uh i'm so bad at remembering names and 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 publishing houses and stuff like that i think someone uh has copies of this for for sale right now uh they printed up a few more another run so now i have a hard time understanding the computer you know the wizard when he's talking to you in the arcade <laughs> Uh, and I had a hard time with it on the uh, in television too, honestly. <laughs> um, there are some phrases he says that I definitely recognize and definitely understand. So, but it's good. I mean, I totally uh, very excellent. There he says, "If you get too powerful, I'll take you myself." Um, Yeah, uh, the Intelligent Collector site has these. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Steve Jones, um, for Wizard of War. So if you haven't picked this one up yet and this is your kind of game, it's a very good port of Wizard of War. I had, I had no trouble controlling my guy. You know, all the uh, all the pieces were there. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a list of phrases that the coin up makes. Oh, you can see here, I got a, a Warlock came out. My, my computer buddy got the Warlock, which is cool. And then we actually got a wizard on this first screen. I was super excited about that. And I managed to get the wizard here in just a second. But you can see he's running around and disappearing like he does in the arcade. Uh, Vulture's telling us that, yeah, all, the, all those voice phrases from the arcade are actually in this version. So that's cool. So, yeah. Yeah, so there you go. Um, that's about all I have uh, to show. Little homebrew highlight here on the on the expo. So, um, yeah, check out our podcast. Um, we haven't uh, we're a little slower at putting out episodes than we have been in the past at certain points, but you know, still we're there. We're trying to we're trying, we want contact. Uh, we want uh, content out there. Um, and I am actually going to be one of the panelists that is playing video games, uh, you know, streaming here. Starting just as soon as I get off of this, I'm going to set up the streaming and play some games there. If you want to see more of these games than what I showed or some other stuff, I'll be uh, streaming, I think, at Game Room B, if you're looking there. So, uh, yeah, uh, check me out there if you're interested. And uh, thanks so much for, uh, for viewing and, and uh, checking things out and letting me be part of this crazy thing here. <laughs>